I'm in a shady spot in my front yard. I'm going to show you our California native plant garden at the three year mark. And there really is a tremendous difference. Here's what this west slope looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. Here's what uh, this sunny section of the garden looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. Let's take a look at what things look like. And as we go through here, we can talk just slightly about macroclimate and microclimate. So for gardeners, macroclimate is basically the region or zone that you're in. Another macroclimate feature is the weather variations from year to year and particularly how much rainfall we get. So here in Fullerton, California, the nearest uh, weather station says this, this past winter we got close to 24 inches, which is nearly 10 inches more than usual. The year before that, I'm not exactly sure how much, but it was less than 14. I suspect it may have been 10 or less. It was really quite a dry year. I remember we had lots of warm weather in February. And it seemed to me that spring that year started sometime in mid to late February. As far as things that were blossoming, out, I do remember about our sycamore tree. There's actually two of them there. And you know, they were dropping their final leaves in February. And at the same time, they were starting to sprout out. And then this year, that didn't start to happen until late March. Once they start to um, sprout out, I thought, well, they'll all, all the leaves will be out in another day or two. But once again, we had this cold, overcast weather. And even the appearance of, of the leaves this year was spread out over a week or more. So that's, that's a macroclimate issue. There's not really a whole lot we can do about that, other than maybe move to a zip, different zone. But most of us aren't going to do that. We're going to stay put, and instead we're going to pay attention to microclimates in our yard, because the microclimates allow us to plant things in, in certain cool parts of the garden that you couldn't plant in the hot parts and vice versa. Uh, so I'm going to show you some examples and I'll start with the, I was looking at my blue eyed grass earlier this morning and thinking, man, it looks sad, but blue eyed grass responds to the sun. And now that the sun is out, it's looking pretty good, but there is some of it that has started to die back. Over here, no, it still looks good. And what I noticed this morning was, particularly on this north facing slope down here, there's some blue eyed grass that, you know, looks just great. This group right here, as well as some of the others that's down further below. Let me give you another example, a really good example. Colin Dunlevy, I'll put in a plug for Colin, a year and a half ago came in and planted this globe mallow. And last year it looked, you know, kind of sad. But this year it's coming along just great. He planted one here in this area that has got shade on two sides. In the morning it's got this big old tree right here that shades it until about 11 o'clock. And in the afternoon, about, I don't know, three o'clock or so, the strawberry tree starts to shade it. And then there's this one. You know, this thing is growing up. The tallest of those is probably seven feet. <clears throat> Planted at the same time, in the same garden. But this one gets good morning sun and good afternoon sun. And so it has just responded quite a bit more. 
Let me see if I can find some other examples. I will show you a buckwheat example over here. I've got two buckwheats that have been in a year and a half, possibly two years. And these are once again another Channel Island buckwheat. This one is St. Catherine Lace and it is Ariaganum giganteum, I believe it is. And this one is giganteum. This one is really growing. It gets lots of shade, which kind of surprises me how big it is. That, one's, that was a one gallon plant. And here's the other one over here, which is in full sun for a good part of the day. And that's this one right here. And this one is smaller. <laughs> it is half to a third the size of the one over here. And so I guess this buckwheat, at least here in Fullerton, in my microclimate, might be different in yours, but in my microclimate, it seems to prefer the dappled shade that it gets in this location. Here's another microclimate example that doesn't have anything to do with California natives, because these are not California natives. Those probably grow in some rainforest someplace. So this is a north facing wall. It's got this big old overhang. And so these are shaded all year round. So these things do just fine in here. They're on the same uh, water cycle as everything else. So once every 14 days, a rainforest plant is growing quite fine here in this completely shaded part of our yard. So reporting live from Fullerton, California, this is Rob Briggs wishing you a great springtime and a wonderful time in the garden.